So let's talk about Ice Age The Meltdown. Bad days, entertainment rankings and reviews. So greetings, my fellow YouTubers, and welcome to Big D's Entertainment Rankings and Reviews. My name is Duol, better known to you as the Big D, and this time around, I bring to you a review of the 2006 computer anime adventure comedy flick Ice Age The Meltdown, released by Fox and produced by Blue Sky Studios, directed by Carlos Saldana in his feature directorial debut. Now, of course... Returning from the first film are the voices of Ray Romano, John Leguizamo, Dennis Leary, and Chris Wedge, who directed the first film. Plus, Sean William Scott, Josh Peck, and Queen Latifah joining the group as new members to this little troop of Ice Age characters and, well, you know the rest. Anyway, this time around, Manny, Sid, and Diego are attempting are planning to attempt to escape an impending flood during which Manny finds love along the way. Anyway, yeah. So anyway, now, if you haven't seen my review for the first Ice Age movie, I advise you to click on the card, and that way you can catch what you might have missed or see it again if you'd like. Because remember, I, for the next few days, I'm going to be reviewing... The whole series, which will include the recent new movie, The Ice Age Adventures of Buck Wild. I'll give you a few more additional seconds to click on that card, or unless it's already vanished. Okay, now, on we are review. Manny, Sid, and Diego are currently living in a large valley surrounded by an enormously high ice wall on all sides. However, the trio subsequently discovers that the ice wall is actually a dam that is barely holding a massive reservoir that could flood the valley to nearly a mile underwater if it fails. A vulture tells them that there is a boat at the end of the valley, the other end, that may save them all, but they only have three days to reach it or die. Shortly after, a huge chunk of ice breaks off from the top of the dam, initiating their immediate evacuation. Meanwhile, one of the glacier fragments that fell earlier actually contains two sea reptiles from the Mesozoic area. Era. Cretaceous. Which, which that's a... I have a boat vertebrae character, and it's, well, it's a great, uh, that I can't really pronounce, you know. Kind of hard to really explain what they are, but, yeah, kind of like a reptile, or something like that. And Maelstrom, which, which are commonly, they are also like a marine reptile. They're also commonly known as pillosaurs, which I think I have heard of those. Maybe. Anyway, which later frees themselves and devours a turtle named Stu. When May is briefly separated from them, Diego and Sid encounter two mischievous opossums named Crash and Eddie, uh, who drive them nuts by playing whack-a-mole with them. May is still worried about being the last man of the life and his family, who had been killed by humans, but is surprised when he encounters Ellie, a female woolly mammoth who believes she is an opossum, and Crash and A's adoptive sister. Sid invites her to tag along with the group to escape the flood, as she brings her brothers. After a dangerous encounter with Cretaceous and Maelstrom while crossing a pond, Sid prompts Diego to encourage him to admit and face his fears. Diego insists that fear is for prey. So Sid points out that Diego is behaving as if he is the water's prey. They discover an area which Ellie recalls as the place where she was adopted. 
she finally realizes she is a mammoth and also expresses her suspicions about how different she was from other possums. Despite this bonding moment with May, she distances herself from him when he suggests saving their species. Ellie and Manny ultimately reconcile when they must cooperate to save the group when the ground cracks under their feet. Sid is kidnapped by a tribe of many sloths who believe Sid to be a god. Sid lights a fire for them and believes that he has finally found respect. They plan to sacrifice him by tossing him into a volcano. Sid narrowly escapes. The next morning, Sid tells the others about his experience, but none are convinced. After being harassed by vultures, the group finds the boat behind a, a field of hot geysers which separates Manny and Manny, Sid, and Diego from Ellie and her brothers when they argue about which way is safest to go through. Alright, now for the ending, you know the procedure. Five seconds to sub this video, go to the description box below, fast forward to the time below. If you've seen the movie, please continue on. Here we go. Okay, you've been warned. Just as the group bypasses the geysers, the ice dam subsequently fails, unleashing a devastating flood upon the valley. Manny is forced to go back to save Ellie after the latter gets trapped inside a cave. Cretaceous and Maelstrom lair ambushes Manny underwater, but he manages to kill the two by tricking them to dislodge a boulder, allowing Manny to save Ellie from drowning at the same time. He and Ellie reunites with the others atop a boulder, but their joy is short-lived as the water is still rising. Meanwhile, Scrat climbs the adjacent glacial wall beside them and inadvertently creates a long crack which he punctures the ice with his acorn. Yep, scratch it again with the acorn of his. The crack then winds into a gigantic fissure which then splits open the wall and drains the floodwaters, but in the process, Scratch falls within the fissure and gets washed away. Shortly after, Sid encounters the mini sloth tribe once again. Their leader suggests that Sid joins them, but Diego replies that he is a vital part in their herd, which makes Sid happy. A group of mammoths later appear from the fissure, proving to everyone that mammoths aren't really extinct. May initially lets Ellie go with the mammoth herd, but after some encouragement from his friends, he catches up to her and admits to her love that he loves her and proposes to her while hanging on a tree like an opossum. The herd alongside the opossum brothers then proceeds to venture out of the valley through the fissure as the screen fades to white. But we haven't ended this just yet. There is an epilogue that shows Scrat having a near-death experience after falling into the fissure. He enters a heaven full of acorns. Suddenly, he finds himself being sucked back just as he's about to reach a gigantic acorn. Scrat then discovers that he has been resuscitated by Sid, which throws him into a fit of rage. The movie ends with Scrat viciously assaulting Sid for saving him. End of story for realsies. So, what did I think of Ice Age The Meltdown? Well, I've seen it more, a little bit less than its predecessor, but I still like it for what it is. It's been some time since I last watched it. But anyway, the film still did pretty well, despite it might not have gone as much received as its predecessor, because the film got mixed reviews and what have you. Uh, I mean, the, all the other, all the Ice Age sequels are pro have I think are in run on the tomato meter, unlike the first one, which is currently at certified fresh. But anyway, the consensus on Ron Tomato says, despite its impressive animation and the hilarious antics of the saber-toothed squirrel Scrat. The film comes up short on the storytelling front. That's understandable, but even so, I still think it's really fun and what have you. And I really did get a good few good laughs from it and what have you. So, overall, the story isn't too bad. Now, I still like the performances we got from our 
well, the comeback characters of cast, Ray Romano as Manny, John Leguizamo as Sid, Dennis Leary as Diego, and Chris Wedge as Scrat. Yeah, they were all good. Now, as for the new members of the group, Queen Latifah, that's the voice of Ellie, who I'm going to say is really good. Play, voice in Crash and Eddie are Sean William Scott and Josh Peck. They're both pretty funny as well. Will Arnett voices the lone gunslinger vulture, who is really funny. And Jay Leno voices Fast Tony, a giant armadillo. Anyway, the film also has a host of others and what have you in its cast. And still, it's pretty good. Yes, and, and the score is done by John Powell, who actually does a pretty good job. Anyway, now, the, the tune Adagio from Spartacus is featured in Scrat's Heavenly Vision, which was pretty funny. And also include and the score features the song Food, Glorious Food, which was originally from the musical and film version of Oliver, which I've unfortunately have yet to see that. I well I've seen a, maybe bits and pieces of it, but I haven't seen it in its entirety. Now I see where that song comes from, since I more recently heard the song in an episode of the fifth season of the classic PBS kids show Zoom. Don't mind me bringing that up, even though I have yet to do a video on that, which I've had I had to reschedule for next month, but um, enough about that. Still, the score is really good. Uh, Carlos Saldana's well direction isn't too bad either, so overall it's not that bad. I mean, I like the first one a little more over this. Not 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 that I'm hurting anybody's feelings, so. But hey, you be the judge. So overall, in the end, would I recommend Ice Age The Meltdown? I'd say, sure, go ahead. In other words, yes. In other words, let me push, reverse the thing they said. Yes, go ahead. The, I mean, if you're a completionist, give this a one-time watch. You might like it, you might not. But you be the judge. After this, we would get... Um, Dawn of the Dinosaurs three years later. Nevertheless, the film went on to make $660 million worldwide, doing much better than its predecessor, and it became the third highest grossing film of 2006. Right behind Pirates of the Caribbean, Dead Man's Chest, and The Da Vinci Code. So... That's that. So what are your thoughts on Ice Age The Meltdown? Please tell me in the comment section below. If you like this video, click the like button, subscribe to my channel, and be a part of the Big D Nation. And stay tuned for my review of Ice Age Dawn of the Dinosaurs coming up tomorrow. Thank you for watching. And if you like this, consider checking out my reviews for these other fun-filled Flicks with animals and what have you. In the upper left hand corner is my review for DreamWorks Animation's Madagascar. The upper right hand corner is my review of DreamWorks Animation's Kung Fu Panda. Or if you maybe, oh I don't know, want something else where you get to meet more, see my review of the Madagascar sequel, Madagascar Escape to Africa. In the bottom left hand corner. And the bottom right hand corner is the button you can click to subscribe. If you like rankings and reviews on movies, TV, music, video games, etc., then I'm your guy. Thank you for watching. Until next time, I'm the Big D saying, see ya.